All right, we got Wade Lightheart here. We're live streaming, and uh, we'll also be posting this to the podcast channel. And uh, Wade is with Bio Optimizers. We've known each other for for quite a while. The last time you were on the show, it's been it's been what two three years, something like something, that. Yeah, a couple something years like maybe. that. Yeah, yeah. One of the things I really appreciate about your approach, and then the approach of Bio Optimizers, your company, is that it's a much more sophisticated and advanced approach to health and fitness. And so many of us are looking at the surface of it's like, Oh, I need more protein to build muscle. It's like, Oh no, here's some mass signs. This will actually, you can, you can break down more of what you're already consuming and actually use that. So what I, what I really like is the approach of what's the result we're going after and what's the best way to get there. And it's, it's, it is. It's more sophisticated. It's more advanced and it's more holistic. And so I'm really excited that we get to chat today, especially since I got one of your new products uh, a week or two ago. I've been using it and really enjoying it. The uh, the was it Cognibiotics. Yeah. And um, dude, I, I really appreciate it when because I, I like nootropics and things like that. And then when I get, when I get it and I go, oh, it's a nootropic that is looking after my gut health. The, these guys understand that the the gut brain axis. You understand that what's happening in the gut is driving uh, so much of the the mental uh, state and the mental behavior and, and all that stuff. So it's cool that you guys go well below the surface and start impacting uh, parts of the body that feed everything else. So yeah, thanks for joining us today, and I'm excited to to dig in. Uh, what what um what got you started in creating some of these supplements that are very different than mm -hmm. what's typically sold in health and fitness? Yeah, it's a great question and great to be here as always. It's uh, always fun to connect and talk shop because it's uh, just as I'm just I've been fascinated with the whole body and physiology and of course and for those who don't know or haven't heard uh, my story, in 2003, I was competing at the Mr. Universe contest and I had the best coach in the world. And after 16 years of training and nine and a half months of dieting, I guess it was, and I was like staying at a lean body fat. I, I After the universe, I went from, I would say Mr. Universe to Mr. Marshmallow. I gained 42 pounds of fat and water in 11 weeks, totally blew up, totally wrecked my digestive system. I was doing the classic you know, 250 grams of protein a day and all that sort of stuff and training like a maniac and all that sort of stuff. And that, that was all well and fine. And that was what I would call a performance based diet. And a performance base was I was looking for a certain cosmetic external result that was relative to the sport I was doing, which is bodybuilding, which is purely cosmetic, right? So when that happened, I was dumbfounded. I was like, how is this possible? I've got the best coach coaching in the world. I've got Spartan like discipline. I'm not missing anything on my diet. I go to the pinnacle of what I'm supposed to be at. And I, I'm a train wreck. And, and I had the good fortune of meeting a fellow by the name of Dr. Michael O'Brien. God bless his soul. He passed away about a year ago. And he was like in his late seventies and he had clear eyes and radiant skin and he was super vibrant. And he was, I was just like, this guy could just totally kick my butt. And he's in his 70s. I attended a lecture to him and I was just amazed with his knowledge, his wisdom, his understanding, his comprehension, just the, the aspects of physiology that I, I wasn't connected to because I was focused on kind of the industry standards. And so I went to him and I said, to explain my story. And I said, Dr. Brian, what, what, what am I missing here? And he says, very simple. This changed my life. He said, you've learned how to build the body from the outside in but you haven't learned to build the body from the inside out. And that just like, you know, it's like, what's the sound of one hand clapping, you know, bang, oh, you know what I mean? It hit me like a ton of bricks, you know, exercise, physiology, physiology, nutrition, body, but all those things that I've been doing for all those years were looking from that and made some fundamental assumptions that if I put it in my mouth, it automatically went either as a building block or to an energy unit. And what I learned from Dr. O'Brien is there's a multi-phase conversion process that is involved and the efficiency of that process determines my result, which means food comes into the mouth, it start, you chew it up, you break it down, it goes into the esophagus, down there into the upper cardiac portion of the stomach, 
You got 30 to 60 minutes where the enzymes work on it. If they're present, most people don't have that present. Then hydrochloric acid comes in. Hopefully you're producing enough. Most people by 40 are not. That creates a change in the pH. It also deals with your immune system. And then it's buffered by minerals to come out of that. So you don't get like, you know, all the uh, inflammation or, you know, ulcers and stuff in your stomach. And then into the, into the gut flora or into your intestinal tract where you've got all these different strains, the good, the bad, the ugly, 10% good, 10% bad, 80% opportunists, which are now going to convert whatever you consumed into either energy units or building blocks. And if it doesn't do that, what's going to happen is it's going to convert that leftover food to some sort of toxin that's going to mess you up. And then hopefully your peristaltic contractions going and, and you eliminate everything. So I was like, okay, well, that's well and fine. So going backwards, you know, reverse energy, I realized that just because I was eating 200 grams of protein, that didn't mean I was converting that into 200 amino, 200 grams of amino acids. Oh yeah. Well, I remember when, uh, I mean, I was living that lifestyle. I was uh, competing in weightlifting and maintaining a weight class and, and you know, uh, I was eating 200 and 250 grams of protein a day. And over the last five years, digging more into health, a little less into, you know, uh, instant results. And I look back and I go, man, I was bloated. My joints hurt. Uh, I was, I was red, you know, I'm, I'm light complected person. Like I was like, uh, I was inflamed. Um, and then my shits were just, uh, not, not doing what they do now. <laughs> and I go, Oh, I was actually, you know, I was, I was drinking these shakes and all this stuff. They were going right through me. They were probably doing more harm than good. And when I get talking to people about this kind of stuff and they, I hear about what they're on, I go, stop drinking that shake. Uh, you're, you may be doing more harm than good here. I don't know. Um, but you can usually look and tell, or you can just look in the toilet and get a good idea of, uh, what we should be doing. Uh, and, and I don't know how to, how to like really fix that aside. Like my approach was just eat less, right? Eat, mm -hmm. you know, I cut it back big time, but then also lost a lot of muscle mass. So I remember, I remember listening to a show you guys, uh, I think, I think you were on with maybe it's Ben Greenfield show or something like that. And you were talking about the digestive enzymes for the protein. I'm going, Oh shit. All these lot, this whole like 15 years of my life where I was stuffing myself. And I, I knew deep down there was, there was something inside of me going, you know, you're not digesting all this. And yet I, I still was like forcing it down. Um, yeah. Can you, can you tell us about like, how much protein do you really need to be eating when you're, well, when you're being an, an athlete like that with well, or without having, enzymes? Well, you know, I was consuming kind of the standard uh, one gram per pound of body weight and a little bit more in a contest dieting because of the satiety factor that protein provides, especially on a low calorie diet. That's one of the advantages of it. So I was taking it about 250 grams a day at the time when I was competing in an O3. Well, uh, after meeting Dr. O'Brien and learning about enzymes and probiotics and how they interacted and could optimize your utilization of the protein you were consuming, um, Matt and I really went after this and started split testing. We had a, a whole group of bodybuilders from around the world and we were kind of like original biohackers this was like 04 05 Ooh. and we started we started developing specific enzyme and probiotic strains that worked on breaking down amino acids uh, protein into amino acids and over the course of the four years i went from consuming 250 grams of protein to 85 grams a day and people go well how's that possible i'm like well the assumption people make is they assume that they're taking whatever they're taking is getting digested and utilized. So I went back to the world championships. I did better. I felt better and I didn't blow up after. And I was only eating 85 grams of protein a day on a plant-based raw food diet. That's how extreme I went. I'm not suggesting or promoting that. I'm just saying I wanted to push it to the extreme. Could I achieve levels? I showed up about eight pounds heavier than I was like eight pounds of muscle heavier four years later, four years later into my career, eating a third of the protein I had, but I was stacking it with the mass enzymes and then the probiotics, which that, and, and I had all this research. I mean, I knew what I was doing by that time. Cause I had, you know, thousands of people giving me the feedback and we kept tweaking and optimizing the formula. So 
from that point on, I started looking at a lot of different things related to, well, how is it? We, I knew about the gut brain connection. Okay. And that 95% of your neurotransmitters are made in your brain. And we also noticed that there was a lot of people who were suffering from various, uh, I would call psychological conditions. We can't use the terms, but say low mood or feeling blue or feeling scattered or inability to focus and these type of things, which were directly connected to neurotransmitter production. And we would see about, I don't know, 20, 25% of people that just on a regular high quality mass sign product were getting improvements on that. And I said, well, well, what, what probiotic, like, okay, so that's part of it, but what probiotics are actually making the neurotransmitters? Because we've seen this explosion in the biohacking world of everybody's doing a neurotrans, whether so, it's- So are the probiotics taking the nutrients and converting that into neurotransmitters? Correct. So what's okay. Correct. So what happens in our, you know, antibiotic, anti every bacterial world is we've been sterilizing the essential bacteria out of our digestive systems. And I believe that there's a correlation between this and the challenges that people are having in various mood disorders, concentration abilities. And so what's happened is we see people who are pushing themselves are like, okay, you know what? Give me some Adderall, give me some Vivance, give me some Modafinil, give me, you know, Adderall, whatever it happens to be like, you know, or they're going into high levels of caffeine or they're on the aracetans, paracetans, you know, anaracetans, you know, all the, all the, all the, the mushroom, there, there is this massive focus right now because people are feeling overwhelmed. They're feeling, I can't keep up to the space of the digital world. I need to focus. I'm having scat. And they're doing this and they're, and they're, they're using these mechanisms and there's nothing wrong. I'm not here to condemning that, but they're using things that it's like putting a turbocharger on your car, but not filling up the gas tank. You got more power and more horsepower and you go faster and you can do that, but your burn rate's gonna be higher. So you're gonna exhaust your fuel tank of neurotransmitters. And anybody that's been on any one of these uh, drug-related neurotransmitter programs knows that there is a point where the benefits end and the challenges start up. And so of (laughs) course, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Okay. And you're right. The, well, the funny thing is, is we're doing the same things with nootropics as what we were doing with, when we were trying to build muscle is yeah. because, I mean, one thing that I did is I, I uh, transitioned from the world of a- athletics. I mean, still participate to a degree, but really put my attention in a business. And when I did that, I'm, I'm somebody who loves uh, substances. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, mm-hmm. since I was 15 years old, I was researching what substance can I put in my body it's going to make me perform better. Mm-hmm. So it, it's not a mystery. You know, I, some people on the outside looking in are going, wow, you're really toying with a lot of stuff. And I go, well, I've been toying with a lot of stuff my whole life. And it's funny to, to have that like, oh, I'm not good enough in athletics. So I got to get an edge with supplements. And so I get into business and you're right. There's just so much data that we have to consider. There's uh, the machines are allowing uh, for, uh, us to do a lot less monotonous work, which means that we're always having to be on the creative edge. And so is, so is the other guys, so the, the competition, the market's just huge. And so now I'm like, all right, if I want to be competitive in this market, I need to, I got to be on every day. I got to mm-hmm. show up to work every day. And if I'm having a down day, you know, a lot of times it's like, all right, I have a choice. I'm either going to take a rest, which is, you know, the, the right answer is take a day off, relax, um, eat well, t- get some rejuvenating activity. But then the, the answer that's most oftenly uh, gone after <laughs> for a lot of people, and sometimes for me too, I've gotten better about it, which is grab some pills, get a nootropic, uh, drink an extra cup of coffee, plow right through. And yeah, there's consequences to that. It doesn't, you can't keep that up for, for very long at all. So, uh, it, it, it's funny. Cause as you're talking about this, I'm like, oh shit, I did the same exact thing in my athletic career, in my business career, as I did my athletic career. It was mm-hmm. like, oh, I was just taking a lot of protein, a lot of BCAAs and stuff like that to compete. And I was like, all right, now I'm competing in business. And I go, huh, doing the same shit. And 
now we can do it better. <laughs> correct. Correct. And that's, yeah. you know, that's the idea is like anytime that you add what I would call a, 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 a drug agent or a nootropic and nootropics can kind of flip into both areas. There's the non-chemical, like the non ones that aren't classified as drugs. And then the ones that are, some and, are man-made, some aren't. Yeah. So there's, yeah. there's, there's somewhere that line kind of blurs for people. And generally they start out on one level and graduate to further and oh, further yeah. levels, right? Because all of a sudden what happens? That product doesn't work for you anymore. You're not getting the same kick. You're not getting the same charge. So what do you do? You up the dosage and then you up the dosage. And then all of a sudden you start getting more side effects for the effective dosage versus the, so then you go, okay, I need to switch to this one. I need to switch to this. And then pretty soon it's like, I need something stronger. And that's all well and fine. But again, you have to realize is it's like, you're exhausting your supply lines that actually build those new neurotransmitters. And so what we did is we started looking at this and say, hey, let's reverse the trend. And there's two combinations of things that you can do traditionally to bring balance back to the system. One is through Chinese medicine, which has been around for thousands and thousands of years of, of taking a variety of herbs that build up, you know, Jing and Cheng and all that sort of stuff, right? You can get into all that or that have immediate, um, you know, either calming you down or bringing you up depending on what you're doing. And you really need a good Chinese practitioner, someone that really understands that to be able to really modulate that. And you need really quality stuff. The other area, which I think has been grossly overlooked is do we actually have the types of probiotics in the gut that actually manufacture the neurotransmitters. And I think for a lot of people who have exhausted areas or who are, who have become dependent on caffeine, dependent on, uh, you know, nootropics or condemned on brain focused drugs, um, oftentimes they don't have those probiotics. So it is an essential move for them. So there's two folds of it. If we can address those underlying industries, if we, in other words, we can get the factory production much higher. Number one, we can oftentimes just get the result that we want anyways. And number two, if you are that person that's pushing the edge, right? Guess what? Now you've outfitted the factory, you've increased production supply, and you're going to be able to sustain that peak performance level much longer than you could before because you got the supply lines, if you will, to, to feed that, that cognitive health that you're looking to have to get that edge that you want. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, one of the things, especially if we're taking a lot of Rastams, is we may deplete choline. Yes. Right? And then when I was first, I mean, I've been playing around with nootropics since about 2011. And before it was really a thing uh, where I was having to buy a single ingredient. You get, back then we had to create our own stacks. And uh, yeah. <laughs> I remember taking the, taking the powders out and can like, okay, that's about, you know, this much and this much and giving it a try. Like, Oh, that was too much. You know? <laughs> yeah. I remember, I remember playing around with it. And my wife at the time, just like, all right, he's got a, he ordered a bunch of white powders and mixing it up. Yeah. Tastes like complete shit. Oh. Uh, but oh. an hour later, I'm like, I feel the best I've ever felt. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Let me but... run through this wall and demonstrate how effective <laughs> this is. <Yeah. laughs> like the Kool-Aid yeah. man from the seventies, right? <laughs> he ran through the brick walls. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. So like one of the things I learned early on is you can deplete your choline. And then I was like, Oh, I can get choline out of eggs have choline. And then I find out, you know, I was like, actually, you're probably not going to get a lot of choline out of those eggs. Not, not how you're depleting it here and then now I'm like oh i gotta take some some phosphatidylcholine or whatever it is to help replete that but it's one thing to look at a single thing that's getting depleted you know choline yeah. is an energy you know like uh we need it to create all the you know make the brain work better we'll just say yes. that and but what else what else are we missing and so it's one of those things when we start talking about a single ingredient that is not getting produced i start, I, I go oh we only know about one. There's a ton of others. And so what you're talking about is just creating uh, uh, conditions in the body so that we're producing everything we need to, to, to operate at that level. How long does it take for like, if I'm taking your, your uh, cognitive biotics, how long does it take for it to fortify my body to, to, yep. to replete maybe what I've depleted um, 
And yeah, how long does it take before I start noticing a difference? Well, great question. And so there's going to be a, there's a twofold effect when you're talking about the cognibotics and I'm going to back the truck up there so I can explain the mechanism to people first cool. with, there's only two items inside your body that does work enzymes, which are in charge of everything from thinking to blinking and probiotics, which are really kind of specific mobile bags of probiotics that jack right into your nervous system. They give you cravings. They make you feel good. They make you feel down. They, 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 they are, are, they're an essential component of that chain. These are the factory workers, like the guys that deliver the packages here during the, the, the shutdown. They're, they're the warehouse workers. There's the guy that cleans the streets. They're the guys that make sure the power's on. And if we didn't have them in our body, we'd be dead. That's, and if you don't have certain amount or sufficient amount of the right probiotics inside your body, you can't manufacture these essential neurotransmitters. And so while the body has a variety of ways to compromise, you'll never hit your optimal level. You'll never hit your peak level. And so many people will have gone through a course of antibiotics for some reason, or they've gotten ill, or they went through a major stressful situation for a period of time or whatever. And they totally wiped out their gut flora. And if you're in a situation like that, you're probably going to need a minimum of 90 days to rebuild it. And, and probably the best under the guidance of someone who understands what's going on and is correlating it with your diet. Because if I'm on a keto diet or I'm on a paleo diet or I'm a vegetarian diet or like all of those are going to contribute what families of probiotics are going to be available and you want to make sure that you're getting enough prebiotics that are going to support the probiotics you're going to go in. So that's the big picture first, because I want to explain the mechanisms before I talk about the individual side. So when the person starts taking a, a well-structured cognibiotics, and so what we did is we have actually, we're one of the few supplement companies that actually have a uh, university team of researchers that are testing these on various prebiotic me mechanisms. We test doubling rates. We test, do they withstand the intestinal tract uh, acid, all that sort of stuff. We're actually testing them all the time um, so that we can find out, do we get the right combo? Are they competing with each other? Are they having a problem? So you need probiotics that don't compete with yourself. You need the right prebiotics. And then we went off and, and got a, a Chinese medicine pr practitioner who happens to be a PhD in neuroscience. And so, Perfect. He, he, so he knew how to cook up the right herbs in order, because when you make Chinese herbs, doing them individually isn't the same as if you boil them synergistically. So before we'd go off to the Chinese market and you got to get all these herbs and you got to put them in a pot and you cook it up and you, and, and for whatever reason, anything that enhances your brain just tastes like garbage and smells terrible. I know that's for sure. I don't know why that is, but anything that's good for your brain just is just God awful. It's, I don't know, but anyway. Oh, yeah. so I, I've had my fair share of uh, Chinese medicine doctor uh, prescriptions where yeah. I walk out of the office with bags of uh, looks like he went to the, the local park and I think I even found like a, a and... cigarette butt in there once or something, but uh... yeah, <laughs> no, uh... yeah. <laughs> needles, <laughs> use needles. <laughs> so it's like, oh, no. I don't I know if this and, is the right thing. Like, like, oh yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna give this a taste, a tea. Yeah, like, oh, fuck man. Yeah, yeah totally. it, it, it gets wild. It gets wild. I mean, the, the, the role of an experimenter can get a little sketchy at times, but anyways. Yeah. Yeah. Try, <laughs> all right. You put it in your mouth. Now try putting it in your butt. That's that. That's when you know you've crossed the line into a yes. true biohacker. Correct. So <laughs> Correct. So, um, so I've done that model and, it, and it's effective, but it's, it's cumbersome. People don't have the time. People don't have the effectiveness. So we had to get the specific herbs cooked up together and then add it to and then we needed the right combination of probiotics on the other side so we combined two different disciplines that don't necessarily work together and then combine it all into one unit because we love nootropics we love biohacking and we love having that mental focus clarity uh and, and you know just fortitude for a long period of time so when people take it they're going to probably notice an effect just pretty quickly and that's mostly coming from the chinese herbs so you're that's that's interacting directly with your nervous system response and getting that oh you know i i, I do feel kind of good i feel kind of you know i got a nice mood going on I, i'm not feeling that reactiveness from things 
And then as the probiotics start to grow and take hold, um, then you're going to see improvements over time. So 30 days is usually a good shot when you're like, okay, I'm definitely feeling different. And when I, what I suggest people to do is actually track and journal, like how often did you get, did you get reactive or did you blow up or did you feel down? Those are good indicators. And if you're at like, okay, I have eight episodes a month. Well, the next month is, you're probably going to cut that in half. And then pretty much this is across the board with any, um, probiotic uh, formulation, well formulated. And I'm not just talking about my brand. I'm talking about any brand out there that's really high quality. You're going to look at about 90 days, about one cycle. Like, and if you look historically, they, people would be, if you think about it, certain probiotic strains would have been active in the various seasons of the year to difference of degrees. And so one of the things that I believe is if you're going to start a new probiotic strain for anybody, go with 90 days, really commit to it and make sure you have the dietary component that supports it. So obviously, you know, like Matt, my business partner is a keto guy and I'm a vegetarian. Well, we need a very, we have a very different diet and we're going to have to make sure that the probiotics are going to survive with that type of diet. Because one of the things where things don't get a hold or colonize is because people don't have a diet that supports those probiotics or the probiotics can't be shelf stable. And so they literally starve to death and they're out of the body in a 24 hours. So you need to kind of dose up for a period, an extended period of time to get the full benefits. And then what I suggest people to do after that, go on something for 90 days, then try another product right? Until you find your go-tos and then on your go-tos, you can cycle through them, you know, on alternating months. So usually if you can get three or four good, like good probiotics that work for you, the best option is once you've colonized and got them effective in your body, then you can just cycle through them so that you're rotating all along or you're changing them with your diet strains. And that's like when you really get into the nuances of biohacking, it's really fun and you're going to get the best results. So you would do one for 90 days and then you would come off and go to another one for another 90 days. Yeah. Yeah. Or if you've already got an established probiotic that you like, yeah, probably kick on that one for maybe a month and then start another cycle or whatever. Cause if you've already got it established, what'll happen, you know, as I said, it's 10% good, 10% bad, 80% opportunists. And these are kind of rising and falling based on the diet and based on the environmental conditions. So if you have an established strain in your, once you've established a strain in your probiotics, even if it's not well served for a period of time because of diet or stress or environment or wherever you're going, you're going to colonize that much easier again, because there's going to be a certain strain that's going to kind of go in a semi-dormant state sitting in the mucal plaque somewhere in the, in the mucus somewhere. And then when the conditions change and it's right for them, like they see their friends show up you know, you're taking more or you're following a diet that's going to help them grow, then they're going to explode. Then they're going to grow on a much faster rate. And, and so once you establish colonization, then you're, then, then you're good to go. And it takes about 90 days for that. That's what we've found. We find best results on 90 days. And you're going to, you're going to notice a difference in how you feel. Yeah. So I think usually I, usually I you lot- can start to feel kind of somatic effects, you know, first week or two, you start to feel a difference and then they, it becomes, more and more consistent over time. Got it. Got it. Okay, cool. Good to know. So, so with the cognobiotics, I'll notice, you know, I should notice same day because of the Chinese herbs, but the probiotics yeah. might start noticing. It might take two weeks, might take four five, six weeks. Um, exactly. Depending so on the uh, person, I'm sure. Yeah. I mean, so we started, we started using this formulation a few months ago, we were testing a variety of different combinations and we settled on this formulation and I would say there was two things that I did that really transformed myself. Number one, uh, I'm a big believer in neurofeedback. A shout out to Dave Asprey. I went to 40 years of Zen and had some very, very powerful experiences about activating uh, different brain states and probably advanced my meditation at least 15 to 20 years. It was really, really wow. powerful for me. Um, and what's interesting is you, we really biohack that when we go like we're pounding all these different things but since that time i also started using the cognibiotics the formulation that we settled upon after all our research and i can honestly say i've had only two episodes where something 
affected me negatively emotionally. And those lasted for about five minutes. It was more like a ripple in the pool of peace in my mind. And I was like, oh, I'm kind of feeling that kind of hit me somewhere. Must be something in myself that I got to look at and literally resolved it within an hour. Other than that, and I do believe that was just from building up a neurotransmitter reserve that was helping supporting what I was augmenting my concentration level and my, my, my brain states. So I, I would have to say there's just two, two components that combine together, but I have been testing it with our kind of like our, our, we call them our legend lab rats who kind of, you know, get access to our products early on friends and, and people who are, you know, kind of elite biohackers. And they're like, Hey, let me try more like, okay, try this out. I know you're going to do the test. You're going to do your, your, you know, HRVs and you're going to see brain state and you got your, you know, they're, they're real hackers that are getting data. They're not yeah. just going by, you know, feelings. And we've seen across the board, um, real improvements, particularly people who are feeling kind of anxious or having that, you know, yeah. you know, all the negative feelings that people are having right now, we've seen a real market uptick. They're like, I, I'm not that stressed out. I thought I'd be worse. And it's like, yeah maybe this is helping them. Nice. Yeah. I, I, I like what you're saying. The, the, you know, it, it's a combination of the two things you got meditation practice Yes. with uh, hardware upgrades um, is one, one way I like to think and talk about it is you have the hardware, which is the body, you have the software, which is the approach, the philosophy, the meditation, the language, all this stuff, but we're not computers. So if you upgrade Correct. the software, it upgrades the hardware. It's not like these aren't standalone things. If you upgrade the hardware, it changes how the software works. So Correct. it makes perfect sense. And it's good to do both things. Like pills aren't going to fix it, but neither is just meditation by itself. I mean, you want to speed it up. You want to speed exactly. up that meditation or, or the results of that meditation. Give it the food. Meditation is like training. Yep. So if you train, but you didn't have uh, the food necessary to support it and the fuel, then there you go. Uh, what is, all right, say I'm taking a nootropic stack already. And then uh, should I come off the nootropic stack? And then I'm, I'm asking for myself. Right. No, what I, I did was I, I spent a few days taking the cognitive biotics by themselves and I didn't take any of my other nootropics that I normally take. And then the last couple of days I've stacked them. Um, what is, what's your approach on that? I'll be frank. We haven't, we haven't got enough data with our biohackers to kind of see what's working better for people. Some people are going off their newts and some people are staying on them and just they like, just, just give me more guys to keep the system going. Right. I, I yeah, like, yeah. so, so I, I can't comment about, you know, where people are at or what they're doing. I do welcome though. We do welcome anybody that tries their products to give us the feedback of what they've done, how they've tried it. So we can start aggregating some, what I call clinical data, because the one caveat I have with research information is it never accounts for bio individuality. It never texts for the individual genetics and and, you know, factors and epigenetics and methylation components. So if you do a study with 12 people or 15 people or 20 people or whatever, that, that, that study could be totally skewed just from bioindividuality. And so yeah. the data isn't always applicable in a clinical setting. What I love to see is clinical results from people out there on the front lines the people who are, are demanding the performance and saying, I'm willing to test pilot them and then give us that data. So then what we can do then is we can start to cultivate better studies, study work that are going to be, give us meaningful results as opposed to the other way around. And that's my big pet peeve that you can only do so much in a lab. Eventually you got to go out there. It's like, you know, it's like everybody feels like they're a, a UFC fighting legend when they're fighting the bag and throwing the kicks and everything. You climb in the cage with somebody knows what's what's going on. It's yeah. a whole different game. <laughs> you know? Yeah, 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 definitely. You know? That's you know? true. You get into the 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 day to day life, and it's uh, it's a different thing. Mm-hmm. Um, what? Sorry, I'm I'm uh, actually doing some research as I'm as I'm interviewing you about, yeah. so I can ask better questions, uh, which is rare because. Now, now I have to know, uh, I'm like tuning into this. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come off 
So I'm, I'm having a 10 day overlap. I'm going to do, a, I'm doing 10 days of, of uh, cognitive biotics while I'm on this, the cycle of nootropics I'm taking right now. I'm going to come off of it and I'm going to do cognitive biotics only for a couple of weeks and see how that feels. Do you think that'll be long enough or do you think I should go longer? Yeah, I you, you should be able to feel a somatic effect uh, kicking in because what's typically just a quick question for you because I let everybody kind of be, I, I love this kind of talk. Yeah. What do you feel is your normal letdown phase when you come off uh, neotropics or a particular strain? You probably know what that is. I, I don't. I, I'm, I'm very good at cycling on and off. And I yep. even I, I come off on the weekends. So two days, so five week, on I, two days off. Yeah. Two days a week. I'm doing no caffeine. No, like I don't do anything. It's sometimes I fast. I'd say, uh, uh, I'll, I'll cut it plus fast. And then I definitely feel a drop when I'm fasting, uh, in the absence of the, anything that's stimulating, mm. but yeah, but fasting, you get a lot of BDNF. So it's worth the whiles. I'm doing alternating yeah. fast right now to jack my BDNF up. Doing every other day. Yeah. Every other day. So 12 yeah. hours of eating, then eight to eight and then 36 hours of fasting three days a week. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Um, well, to answer your question, I don't notice a big drop off. Well, it's, it's not that much great. of a difference, but I know, and I only take nootropics. My rule is, is I feel, I don't take nootropics when I feel bad. So I only take them to, if like, if I feel good and I'm ready to get after the day, I take them, but I never take them to beat uh, fatigue. So if I'm experiencing fatigue, even if it's just mental fatigue, but I'm physically strong. I cut it out. It, I've depleted something. The way I look at it is I've depleted something. I don't know what it is. And I may never find out, but I know one way to fix it is to relax. <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's a really sophisticated look. I, I think that's, a, that's, that's smart. I think a lot of people do the opposite when they feel down. That's when they, that's yeah. when they re, they, that's when they reach for the tabs of <laughs> quote yeah. unquote NZT, right? <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's, it's hard, man. It's hard. Yeah. I mean, yeah. the, I mean, I, my other rule is if I'm ever feeling depressed, I, I only drink alcohol uh, in a celebratory mood. If I'm not right. feeling, if I don't feel celebration, I don't drink. And the yeah. same with, uh, with cannabis or any other substance. It's like only if I feel great. Cause yeah. man, if you don't feel great, something, something's up. Something's yeah, if, you, if, if you're using chemicals to kind of modulate down moods, you're going to exaggerate the, the underlying condition. So yeah. same thing, you know, and that's you've actually come to the same conclusion from experiential reality that we're trying to address fundamentally is like, OK, if the underlying we're trying to address the underlying factory factors, if you will, for lack of a better word, we yeah. want to make sure that you can produce the, the, the specific elements that allow you to get that state of mood or clarity or focus but because a lot of people just don't take care of that side of it and that way um you get the most out of whatever you're doing or you don't need to do anything either or it doesn't matter depends yeah. on your own personal choice makes well, sense what, what i'm you know uh what i'm looking at with the cognitive biotics is i really want uh the way i'm looking at it now especially since talking to you is it's gonna it's gonna make my foundation more robust so it's likely I'm going to have more days where I'm ready to get after it, you know, or let, you know, uh, less days where I feel like I have to like dial it back. Maybe, maybe not. And uh, we'll see, but I, I'm already, I'm, I'm, I'm in just from how it's done and understanding that I'm like, this is something that, I, that uh, uh, I want to really see the effects of in the absence of other things and, and see what's possible because uh, when you're addressing things with the gut, yeah, the more, the better my gut health gets, the better my life gets. That's for sure. Yeah. Typically as, as you know, to use a term that's been thrown around the it flattens the curves. <laughs> in other words, you know, it, the lows and the highs tend to, to, to lean out a little bit better. And I would say that at standard baseline, depending on where you are starting out, the worse yeah. that you're off, the higher you're going to notice the, the, that baseline coming up, right? Yeah. That baseline is going to go and, and those, those peaks and valleys are going to start to trough out and, 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 and get a little tighter. Um, and then 
I do believe that when you really kind of get into all this stuff in, in true biohacking, not only do you, you get your baseline higher, but your, your total, your, your net peak, if you were charting this on a quip, your net peak is going to be higher than, than, if, than if you didn't have it because you've got the resources to fuel whatever your genetic capacity is or whatever you've trained yourself into to go beyond your baseline. So I do believe that uh, combining your nootropic factors, your, your gut probiotic strains to get this components, you know, along with, you know, systematic brain training is really the holy grail of cognitive health. Uh, that you got to do all three. You got to take care of your gut, you got to take care of your brain, and then you've got to use the tools and resources which are exploding on the market right now to, to really take your cognitive capacity to be all that it can possibly be. And I, I, I go back to a study. This is kind of interesting going back in history. Most people don't know when they, when they put goiter, you know, goiter was a big issue at the turn of the century. It's that well, big kind goiter? of thing. Goiter is that kind of thing that comes out on your neck because there's not enough iodine. There's a big okay. issue. So the U S government added iodine to salt and everything. They knew that it was deficient in iodine to fix the goiter. When guess what? It fixed the goiter. It was f phenomenal for doing that. But here's the part that most people, I can't believe they haven't looked at this. The average IQ in North America, the baseline went up 15 points by adding iodine. So if people ever wanted evidence about being able to increase intelligence relative to nutrition, that's extraordinary evidence to indicate that. And then the other thing is, if you look at worldwide um, um, health testing, and they said, what is the one thing, I love this from Dr. Jordan Peterson, who was talking in psychology, who says, what is the one thing that would make the biggest difference in the quality of life, in the quality of intelligence, and in the quality of relationships worldwide is not more money, not more job, nutrition, that key nutritional deficiencies are actually affecting cognitive health. And in, in, in America right now, one in six kids are being born with some sort of debil debilitating cognitive condition. Well, what are we doing? We're adding all these drugs, we're adding all these chemicals, we're adding these herbicides and pesticides that wipe out the bacteria. We're feeding them sugar and blue dye and preservatives and, 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 and all these chemical agents. We're not providing them the essential vitamins and minerals and trace minerals and the, and the probiotic strains that you would get normally if you ate this food off the ground or, or, or you know, these type of things. And that culmination effect is trickling down and disrupting our natural neurotransmitter production factories and, and along with a variety of other conditions. And so if you understand that and you, you go, okay, well, how do I, I'm not complaining how the world is. I'm not here to say we got to end civilization and go back to the land. I'm here. Look, this is the environment we're living in today. I can't change the world. I, I love driving down the highway at 85 miles an hour. I love taking a plane to the other side of the world so I could see another place. And I love connecting digitally video and having my phone and getting access to the greatest minds in the world. I love that, right? That's all advantages. <laughs> I'm not, I don't yeah. want to give that up, but I have to recognize that our advancement to a more technologically advanced world has left our individual organic biochemistry in shambles. And if you yeah. want to take full advantage of all the benefits of modern society, guess what? You got to haul your biological ass along with you. And if you have a compromised biology, it's like trying to win the Daytona 500 running a wheelbarrow. It doesn't matter how much you train. It doesn't matter how much you run. You are not going to win that because your cart is not, your vehicle is not capable of competing on the fast track of life. And the real, and I know everybody on your show is a fast track life of person. They're not, people aren't finding you because they want to be mediocre. People are not coming right. to this show because they want to be also Rams. So they just have to have what I call the come to Jesus reality is if you want to be all you can be, you got to invest in your biology and you got to invest in your biology deep. And if you do that, guess what? You are going to perform at levels that other people don't perform at. I mean, listen to Joe Rogan. He's a great example. I mean, the biggest podcasters are like, oh, Joe's so smart. He's so versatile. He's all these things, you know, and 
he, he's not saying I'm a, he's there doing his, his plant medicines. He's smoking weed. He's doing this, but he takes care of his body every day. He trains every day. He yeah. puts good nutrition into it. There's a reason he's so able to deal with such a wide verse, verse, versatile <laughs> group of people because he's got the biological resources in order to do this. Tim Ferriss, same thing. You look at the biggest influencers right now who get it, who are thinking on another level, who are operating on another level, they're all addressing their biological components, all of them. Yeah. You know, and that's what I think is exciting about this podcast is you're one of these guys that are out there saying, hey, look, let's be all we can do. Let's do all we can. Let's have fun. Let's experiment. Let's be, you know, radical psycho knots or whatever you want to call themselves. But at the end of the day, you need fuel for those rockets of, of, of intuition and creativity and productivity. And, you know, you're not going to get there on, on, on cornflakes and Centrum vitamins. It ain't happening. Yeah. Right. You, yeah. know, you, you, you got to feel that you got to feel that machine. So that's why I'm excited to be here. And I get so pumped up about this stuff because it's like, I could talk about this all day long and I do. Love that. Love that. I, I was always worried as I got older, I watched my dad, like, was able to was able to kick my ass into his like late thirties, his forties, like physically, it, you know, it was, I was like, geez, I gotta keep up with this guy. And I watched my friends who are my age get older. And I just, my dad also worked very physical construction. So he was very, very active. But then I watched uh, my friends, they all age alongside me, you know, one from high school, you know, one guy's an accountant, another guy, you know, they're doing like typical office work is, is uh, very common for these guys and they're out of shape. But I, when I start interacting with certain people and we're doing stuff together, I'm like, oh my God, I can like run circles around these people. Or I've, I've had people on my team who are healthy, who I'm like, I can wear them out. And it's all because like, I've got all these little hacks that they may not know about, or they're not taking advantage of or whatever it is. And I'm looking at, okay, I'm 38. Well, you know, let's double that. I'm going to be, you know, 70, whatever years old. And I still want to be like, I see 70 year olds who are still kicking it hard. They're Big just time. crushing. I go, okay, that's where my mind's at. It's like, today is great. Let's have a good day today, but let's be setting ourselves up for, you know, I want to hang out. Like I, I got this one friend, he's uh, 69 years old. He doesn't hang out with people under 45 because they can't keep up. Yeah. He doesn't want to keep he, hang out with people his own age. Just doesn't isn't exciting for him. Well, even take a guy like a friend of ours, Paul Check, right? Oh I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's put so much effort into all this sort of stuff and fought all the the battles with all the the the, the, the naysayers and stuff. And you go down to him, and he's loading these giant rocks in his Zen rock pile. He's banging it out in the gym. He's super cognitively aware. He's got a wide variety of of knowledge and information in his library. He's practicing his shamanic practices. He's building new courses. He's raising young kids. And, 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 and he's, yeah. you know what I mean? You're looking at the thing and you look at it and you know what? He, he's calm, cool, collected. He's not, you know, and he, the, the amount of, of capacity and stress that that guy is able to manage and handle, which would crush most 20, 30 year olds. Oh, he's yeah. sitting there laughing about it. This is entertaining. This is fun. And, you know, he's, he's dialed in and he's tapped in, but he's done the work on all levels for all these years and stayed open to ideas that might have been contrary to his own opinions. And he experimented. And when he finds out, hey, this works, he integrates it like that. Yeah, and I think that's a great model for us all to follow. Yeah. Paul's one of those guys that um, who's north of I think he's 59 now. Yeah. 58, 59. I'm like he can wear me out. I go hang out with him for a day. I walk out. and just like what, what the fuck happened? Like, you know, a, a workout <laughs> yeah. and a five hour conversation. He's like, I got to go do some other stuff. I'm like, I need to go take a fucking nap. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's levels to this. There's levels to this. All right. Last thing I want to ask you is, um, you, you're, you, you've been, I've always known you to be someone who does fasting protocols. You mentioned you're doing the, the alternating, uh, how does fasting work with some of the products you have going on? Because I remember one of the first things I ever listened uh, when I first found your company is taking the enzymes when fasting and the benefits yep. to speeding up some of the, the, the positive effects of fasting with autophagy and, and yes. all that. What, 
what do I, what don't I know about fasting and probiotics and enzymes? Beautiful, beautifully said. And I think to me, this is, I look at fasting as a, as a, a practice that I think should be incorporated for people. Because if you look at the research and the data, it's the easiest, most cost-effective thing that people can do to enhance their cognitive awareness, to accelerate cellular autophagy for people who don't know what that is. That is eating up all the dead and dysfunctional <clears throat> cells inside your body. We've kind of live in a world where we, we have this permutation of intake, 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 and we have to recognize that toxicity builds up by what we let out of our system. And so when we stop the intake, we're able to direct our enzymatic forces, our detoxification pathways to kind of go into turbo because we don't require the metabolic requirements and to, to get the toxins out of the system, which are, you know, amplified by tens of thousands of times today in the modern world. So enzymes, um, we have found that has just been able to accelerate the benefits and effects by you know, removing toxins from the body and, and, and probiotics. What I typically do with our other volumes is we found that two and a half enzymes to every probiotic, because as enzymes accelerate the detoxification process, you're, you're going to build up more toxins into the system. So adding probiotics or even a little charcoal every day, uh, to drink, some, drink a little bit of powdered char charcoal really, really help suck, suck out the, um, some of the toxins that could come out. And as you get better and better, you, you start doing tweakology. So, so, um, so I'm fasting and I'm taking probiotics and enzymes yeah. during the fast. Is, yeah. is that what you're saying to do? Yeah. What I do is that the night of before I do my 30, so right now I'm doing this experiment on 12 on eating 36 hours off. Okay. And so what I do is I load up, on my enzymes and probiotics just at when I finish my fast or finish my eating cycle. So at eight o'clock at night, at nine o'clock, what I do is I'll take a big handful of enzymes and a big handful of probiotics. Now, typically before I was just using P3OM because it's a proteolytic probiotics, great. But now what I've been doing is I take just four cognibiotics at that point. And then I go through the whole 36 hours and just before I start my cycle, like so an hour before I break my fast, what I do is I take the, um, I actually take the capex enzymes, which is lipids and, and proteolytic enzymes. And I take the cognibiotics in combination with that. And then my first meal is 50 grams of protein. And then I wait 30 minutes before I take in any of the product because I want to get those amino acids in and I want to feed them to those cognibiotics right away so they can convert those amino acids right into the neurotransmitters. And it's golden because like I'll take those, I go for a hike here in the mountains. So I go for about an hour hike. It's about an hour and 15 because I get up on a mountain and I sit up there and meditate with the sun and everything. It's pretty awesome. Nice. And, then, and, you know, kind of bring in, because I do believe that bringing in light into the body accelerates um, production cycles. We know that bacteria respond well to light cycles. And so when I put those babies in first thing in the morning, I haven't eaten for 36 hours. I get them active, the prebiotics are there, the herbs are hitting me, and then I come home and then boom, I feed those guys before I feed my body. That, that 50 grams of protein is going to them and you get a spike. And so clarity, focus, and one of the things that I track is when I speak, how many times am I going, um, er, uh, e, uh, how quickly if I, if I'll journal, for example, if I have memory lapses on particular, like, you know, I can't remember that guy's name. What's that guy's name? What's that guy's name? Well, there, I know exactly where my cognitive <clears throat> health is, how smooth the flow of information is without any chatter. And this was something I learned from Matt, Matt, my, my business partner actually started. He's, I mean, he, he's a, he's a wild man experimenter. He's much more radical. I'm, I'm a much a slow, steady guy. He's like, He's just cycling through tests. Like he's a split test optimizer. So you get it. So, <laughs> yeah. so right now, those things of what I have found to be great. And then I'm working with my um, researcher, Katrine, and she's also been modulating fasting and the cognibiotics. And she really likes them as well coming from a female perspective, because I think for females, when they're doing intermittent fasting, or alternate day fasting. Alternate day fasting is generally not as good for females. They're better off with intermittent fasting. And I find men do better on, you know, eating later in the day if they're doing 
and, and women do better if they eat early in the day and shut down their things. So that's the couple of observational um, data points that I've noticed for people. And of course, at the end of the day, everybody's got to experiment with themselves. But those are some things that we do know at this point. Yeah. Yeah. I was doing a 36 hour fast once a week. I was really enjoying the effects of that. Um, still am. Uh, my last fast was last week, but I'm, I'm going to move it to just every new moon. So that's where I'm at right now is yeah. every new moon. And I was looking at, so what I'm, so what I'm hearing you say is pound some of the, the enzymes and the cognobiotics or the, the enzymes, but when I go into the fast, when I come out of the fast, pound the cognobiotics and wait an hour, 50 grams of protein, and then roll into my, into regular feeding after that. Yeah. And I, I take the, I take the enzymes with the cognobiotics for enhanced effect as well, because keep in mind, enzymes are like cutting the grass and probiotics are like mulching the grass. So they do work synergistically together. And of course I have the advantage of doing that, but you can do straight up cognobiotics and then what people can try. No, I got I've the done enzymes. Both. I'm doing the enzymes too. <laughs> I've done both, but I've done both. So yeah. if you want, to, you want to test them independently to see the results either or, but I, that's the combination that I find has been working best for me doing the alternate day fasting. It's golden. And I, and I lose no mental focus. I lose no mental endurance issues. I go that 36 hours. I'm pounding out podcasts. I'm dealing with my business. I can go out. I hike three, four hours a day during that. In, in the, Are you doing in the any caffeine desert. or anything or is it just water? No, I'll do, I'll do, um, I'm a big fan of, uh, green tea, particularly, uh, I'm into, uh, kind of specialty teas. I'm a little bit of a tea granny and stuff. So, nice. you know, uh, I'm, I'm really a bit of a puer connoisseur. So I like a variety of puers. I'll have, um, I'll have a coffee a couple times a week, which I was off for over a year. Um, just because I burnt myself out on it. I took too much caffeine. So I'm, you know, as we, as you know, we all burn ourselves out and I really did that. But now I was able to correct that using high dosages of magnesium for a period of time, which stabilized my nervous system. So I don't get the jitters or anything like I was before. So people who are getting a lot of jitters, usually things like quintin and magnesium, I think are good combinations to kind of bring that down. You might have to do it for three, four, five, six months to kind of stabilize yourself. If you've been living on that stuff for years, right? Yeah, we'll do that. Right. So yeah, those are things. And sometimes I'll do yerba mate. I like yerba mate as well. Uh, you know, it's, I've been a big fan of that. Although interesting enough for my biology, when I do yerba mate, I do notice it can cause, uh, sugar cravings later in the day. If I do yerba mate in the morning, I notice there's an increased craving for something sweet or sugary or carbohydrate based. And I don't know what the correlation is. I just, that's an observation. Me. Some people don't feed that, but that was that's interesting. Me. Yeah. Cool. All right. Where to, uh, wait, where do people find uh, more about you? Get yeah. more information on what we talked about today. Sure. If they want to take a shot at uh, trying the Cognibiotics, just go to cognibiotics.com slash shrugged 10. So if you put in shrugged 10, you get your 10% discount code, which is phenomenal. And then, of course, for anybody else, well, actually, can... that'll be that'll be Bledsoe ten. Those That's got right. Mixed up. That's okay. Yeah, sorry. That's I got okay. That I, Everybody. I... <laughs> yes. Try that again. Try that again. So, cognibiotics.com, Bledsoe ten. That's right. Yeah. Because I forget what show we're on. Because you've got a couple of them. And yeah. then you can find me at uh, bioptimizers.com. Um, we've got a twelve week course. People want to go with that. They see uh, kind of all the things that we're doing. Instagram, all that stuff. I'm not the what, big what's the twelve week. What's the 12 week? Yeah, course? we have the 12, what I call the 12 week uh, Bioptimizers Awesome Health course. Basically, I just summarized everything I do from the foundational points over a 12 week course, which are like five to 15 minute videos. You can kind of skip around and if you want to dive more into enzymes or more into probiotics or into breathing practice or whatever it happens to be, awesome's an acronym air, water, exercise, uh, sunlight, optimizers, mental beliefs, and attitude, education, testing, coaching to create the course. So they can kind of go it. in there and see all the things that I learned from other people. It's not all about products and things like that. It's just about, here's the things that I learned. Here's the things that I did. Here's who I learned it from. If you want to go deep in that topic, here's a quick and easy way to do it. And so we, we give that away to everybody so they can kind of get up to speed with a baseline to work from of, of proven practices that will allow people to kind of advance, uh, to, as they say, be all you can be. Nice. Hear that. I didn't even know you had that 12-week course. Where have I been? 
I'm going to go uh, check that out now. Yeah. Wait, thanks for joining us today. I know everyone got a lot out of this. So uh, appreciate you and look forward to having you back. Thanks, dude. Great to be here and uh, keep rocking. It's always, always a pleasure.